Hello, welcome to the Iron Man update video. You can see I'm in the printer room right now. All these guys are prepped to print something that'll end up kind of being like a prank in one of my future videos. So if you're interested, stay tuned for the next couple of days. Oh, all the printers except for you. But I thought now would be a great time to go ahead and show you some of the progress on the Iron Man suit. We've run into a couple hiccups here and there. So far, we're, we're still pushing for that deadline next month. But before I show you guys this, we actually have a sponsor for this video, and it's 3D printing related too. We love to see that. This video is sponsored by Printbed. Printbed is an awesome filament company. I personally enjoyed pretty much everything that I've printed out of their filament. All their filament is made and sourced locally. Every single spool from Printbed comes on a recyclable paperboard spool, so that way you're not gathering up a bunch of random plastic spools. It's tangle free, neatly wound. Look at that. This stuff prints great, has an amazing finish on it too. I love this gray, it's just perfect for model making and everything. The average dimensional accuracy on this stuff is plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. Printbed has a lot of different vibrant colors to choose from, and I can say from personal experience that it prints insanely smooth. And what I think is one of the coolest things about the company is you can get your order shipped overnight for five bucks whether you order one roll or ten. This stuff prints great, I've used it, and I personally really did enjoy using it. So be sure to go check out printbed.com using the top link in the description. All right, so this is everything so far. Last time I showed you everything with the arms, chest, abs. I also had the helmet printed as well. However, it was too tiny. This was the Do 3D model of the Heartbreaker helmet. And it's a really solid model, honestly. It's really nice. However, I could not fit it over my head. I really wanna make sure this suit does not look like it has a bobblehead, but scaling it up much larger than this would make it look like a bobblehead. So I just so happened to actually have a friend who is in the process of modeling a Heartbreaker helmet. I told him about some of the struggles with this one and he was able to make a pretty solid one, I'll show you. I haven't cleaned these files up too well, but these are made by my friend Walsh. I'll put his CG Trader link and his Instagram down below. And he split it up into four parts. The fourth part being this back panel so that I could fit my head in here. I actually printed this once and it was still too small. I talked to him about it again. And it was these vents right here that were just giving us a terrible time. So he took the model and edited it so these vents did not cut into my ear quite as much. And now if it's perfectly on my head, ta-da. <laughs> but it really does do a good job of not like chopping into to my ears right now. So I'm gonna continue to use his model. This is actually a version two of what he's making and I think he'll be uploading it soon, but definitely check his stuff out down below. So now we finally have the helmet after three iterations of it, but I don't quite think I showed you the back panel. I printed this out and combined everything and I actually left holes in these vents. The goal is gonna be to have smoke coming out of the back of those, whether it be compressed air or CO2 or something like that. And then I left the holes on top of these shoulders to be able to have shoulder missiles popping out. So that's that. We're continuing with the spring idea for the abs. The sides of the abs are going to be made out of TPU. I'm halfway done printing that. The reason I thought today would be a great day to make an Iron Man update video is because everything that needs to be printed out of PLA is done. Which, by the way, all of this is Polymaker's Polymax PLA. If you're interested, links to that will be in the description as well. But everything that needs to be printed out of PLA or a hard plastic is printed with the exception of the hands, but I'm hoping to be able to have those resin printed. The cod piece, I'm going to be doing exactly what I did with the blue one and that is connecting each of these panels with a small strip of foam so each of them flex between each other but it's still a hard surface. The thighs and the shins all of those are done those took a hot minute that's for sure. I really 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 want the suit to be 10 times more mobile than the previous one. Obviously I said that about the last one and I was able to improve it a lot. But again, you make these things over and over and every time you do it, you come up with a different method that works 10 times better than the previous one. So one thing I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to bend my knee up. And by that, I mean bending it like this. However, in every other suit I have, it's just a hard piece of plastic going against a hard piece of plastic and you can only bend it so far. So that's where these guys came in. I went through and I actually sliced off the top of this thigh piece and I'm gonna reattach it with a series of springs so that when I bend my leg forward, it'll just bend like that. In the same way, I chopped off the back of the knee and reprinted it out of TPU, and I'm gonna stick this back there, and hopefully I'll be able to bend my leg even further. We kind of went with the same method for the biceps and the forearms. I'm just consistently chopping out portions of it that'll allow my arm to bend more, and I'll reprint those portions out of a flexible filament. The shins, I actually printed in two pieces. I connected the two pieces that DO3D originally had separated. I reconnected them, and I just sliced them in a different manner. I know for my blue suit, the bottom of the shin was so tiny, I could barely get my foot through it. And after I would wear it for a certain amount of time, of course, you get all hot and sweaty. Maybe this is TMI. I don't know, but my foot would actually get way too swollen to be able to take it out of the shin. That's how bad it was. So I made sure this time that we'll have a way to open and close this so I'm not shoving my foot through the end of it and yanking my foot out of it. Next, we got the knees. I still need to clean these up a little bit, but I actually took Do3D's file for the hinge and I chopped that up as well. 
well. I cut most of it out just so it looked like this and I'll be printing that large insert that goes over my knee in TPU and this will slide on top of it. I'm not actually going for a hinge system on this suit. Obviously, hinges are cool. It makes it look a lot more mechanical, but I'm really going for maximum mobility on this one. And being able to rotate and turn my shins is not possible with single point hinges. We only have a month left to build this thing. So I'm literally just going to attach everything with straps. I know that's what a lot of people do. I was always kind of against it. I was like, oh, it gets rid of the mechanical aspect of it. But if we're going to try to make this as mobile as possible in as little time as possible, I think that's what we're going to go with. Lastly, we've got shoe covers. These are the shoes that I'm going to be wearing with the Iron Man suit. And simply because these are just the narrowest shoes shoes that I own. I wear size 11 in women, so um, it doesn't really make life any easier, that's for sure. It does, though, help with the proportional side of things, though. My feet don't look absolutely tiny. But when you do put a shoe cover over a size 11 in women's, which is equivalent, at least for Nikes and stuff, to a uh, size 10 in men's, it's just a, it's just a long, a long foot. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe it will look proportional. We'll see. There's also a flap that's supposed to go at the bottom of that shin and fold on top of that. That'll be printed out of TPU as well as the inside part of this shoe that goes in between these two caps. Probably just going to be holding these on with some elastic as well. Now one more thing I wanted to mention, <laughs> pointing back at the helmet that I just left in pieces on the ground. At some point, probably not before the convention, but I do want to motorize a helmet with different opening portions. You've probably seen the Joe's Toys helmet that opens in like six different portions and then it goes all the way up. I believe it's just a series of servos with the right sort of hinges to move things out of the way. So I I think I could do it, but could I do it in a month? Probably not. So, and I'm actually wanting to make a video on this, by the way. I'm planning to motorize this with the Crashworks Helmet Motorizing Kit. If you haven't heard of that, it's a super cheap, super easy way to motorize an Iron Man helmet. And it comes with all these presets for sound effects, LEDs for the eyes, everything. People over at Crashworks sent me one to show you guys, and I'm super excited to do it. Honestly, they're super cool people. They're literally just making it because it's their hobby and they think it should be affordable to people who want to motorize an Iron Man helmet. And they also think it should be easy and it shouldn't be that laborious of a process to learn how to do it. So they're honestly making these at a great price just so people who don't have that much electrical experience can motorize Iron Man helmets. I'm going to be doing a video on it soon. It looks super simple and I'm so excited to try it out. So yeah, that's it. That might have been a short video, but hopefully that updated you on things. Next steps are going to be printing things like arm inserts and knee inserts out of TPU so that you really cannot see me in the suit at all. While I'm printing those, I'm probably going to be sanding my life away. Um, but yeah, that, that's probably what's going to be coming next. So I hope you enjoyed this little update video. Video, stay tuned for more. But yes, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.